Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday, March 27th, the feast day of St. Augusta of Treviso, and she was a 7th century, I think, a 7th century virgin martyr of the faith, and uh, she is the patron saint of Sanita, I think that's how you pronounce it, Sanita, Italy. Um, today's gospel is from John chapter 11, verses 45 through 56. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he, he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another as they were in the temple area, What do you think, that he will not come to the feast? I almost forgot the last couple verses there. Um, so this gospel, again, is, is preparing the way for Holy Week, which begins tomorrow with Palm Sunday. Um, so it says, now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. What is that thing that they're talking about of what he had done? This scene takes place in Mark or in John's gospel directly after Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead, which seems humanly impossible, which it is. Um, that's why there's the, the divine revelation of what Jesus did uh, and the divine nature. But otherwise, um, they we go through this scripture and the, like some Jews believed and then they said others did not. And they but some even did, but they focused the attention on themselves and they went to the high priest, the chief priest, Caiaphas, and um, just they were concerned because if Jesus keeps doing this, if he keeps performing all these miracles and healings and raising people from the dead and speaking the way that he does, more and more people are going to believe, meaning they're, meaning they're going to go against the Roman government. And if they go against the Romans, and the Romans are going to take away their material possessions and their land and everything else and break, up, break apart their family. We have all this stuff. We have this, this huge reaction is going to take place if we let Jesus continue doing what he's supposed to do here on earth. And they have a choice of how they're going to react to that. Um, so we see that Jesus, or that we see that the Jews and these, you know, the Sanhedrins and the Pharisees, they're all focused on themselves. Because Jesus had just done, like he's doing great things and good works. That's why he had just said previously this week that even if you don't believe, focus on the good of my works. Like Jesus was so humble, he didn't even want any attention for himself. He's like, if you don't believe in me, fine, that's great, whatever, in a sense. And then he's like, but at least focus on the good of my works and, and appreciate them and believe in them for what they are. But people still didn't believe. And we see this tension continuously build because um, you know, clearly it says on that last, the one of the, on verse 53, so from that day on, they planned to kill him again because they were wanting to you know, take away, um, they were focused on themselves and what they were going to, what they were going to lose potentially if Jesus kept doing what he did. <clears throat> um, there is a footnote here that says uh, that whenever Caiaphas was talking, he says that 
uh, Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one, the dispersed children of God. So that means all the lost sheep. Jesus is trying to gather up all the lost sheep um, to believe in him and to save them and to bring them back. Uh, but that's the whole point of Christianity. That's why Jesus came, and to save us from our sins. Um, so now we, as we go through, um, and, and Passover is about to come near, um, and, and towards the end of this this gospel verse for today, and they're coming to, you know, they need us, the Jews celebrate the Passover, of which, you know, as we know here coming up on, on Holy Thursday, whenever uh, Jesus is about to celebrate the first Eucharist, um, the first Mass uh, at the Last Supper, uh, that's, that is the new Passover, uh, because up until that point, Jesus, they're celebrating the, the original Passover of the Jewish tradition. tradition. Um, but Jesus came to make all things new. That's why we have the Mass and the, the Eucharist celebrated there. Um, but anyway, we centered around all of this um, because the last question says, what do you think, that he will not come to the feast? Because Jesus left to go in hiding. And uh, he's, you know, they're, they're concerned, like, is Jesus going to celebrate the Passover or not? Or is he going to stay hidden away um, uh, in the mountains, away from all this conflict that's about to take place? And Jesus and us and the Jews, everything here is centered around choice. We have the choice, um, you know, like even back in Lazarus with his family, um, they have the choice to either celebrate what Jesus did by raising Lazarus from the dead or to condemn him for doing something humanly impossible. Jesus, or the Jews and the Sanhedrin have the same reaction to this. Um, so the, the Jews reacted very negatively. Lazarus and his family reacted very positively. Um, but then we also have Jesus who has the choice because Jesus has a choice to stay in hiding and not come to celebrate the Passover and enter into Jerusalem like what he's going to do tomorrow on Palm Sunday. And he also has the choice to refrain and stay in hiding and not go through the upcoming passion of Christ that's going to take place. Um, you know, so some of those, a lot of those reactions, they either focus on ourselves or they focus on others. So everything is centered around choice. Um, so we choose, um, and they choose to react to things, you know, because we all have that freedom and the decisions that we make, um, be it good, be it bad, be it selfish, be it versus for the love of others. So as we enter into um, Holy Week tomorrow, you know, how do we make choices? How do we react to things? Because we have the freedom of how we react, and it's our responsibility to make sure we do it in a virtuous way, centered around truth. So reflect on that. Reflect on our choices. Reflect on who they affect, and if we're centered on others or if we're focused on ourselves. That's the, the challenge for me and for you and for everybody. God bless. Keep it real. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen.